Hi, and welcome to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. It's Lois here, and last week I painted a landscape painting, an expressive landscape painting, with just one colour, Payne's Grey, and it got me thinking, could I do something similar using sepia? If you haven't seen it, I'll link to the Payne's Grey one colour painting in the description below. But today I'll show you how I painted this scene. And I think it's turned out quite nicely. I like the way the sepia, um, like the Payne's Grey, yields the full range of tonal values. It's Cotman brand sepia. I haven't done um, a paint swatching review of sepia yet, but I'll see if I can get hold of a few different brands and I can do a video comparing them. But the Cotman brand is really nice. Even though it's student quality, I find it works really well. So today I'm going to be painting on Saunders Waterford hot pressed watercolour paper. I want to see how the paint and water reacts on the smooth surface of a hot press type paper. It's taped to my board with ordinary decorators masking tape and my board is at an angle of about 20 degrees. So gravity will help me paint. I'm using the wet in wet method where I use a large wash brush to wet most of the page, leaving a few dry patches so I get some soft and hard edges when I come to paint in my, my landscape.
That's nearly all the first layer of wet in wet done, which of course will be most of the painting. So I'm just playing around with the foreground a bit. I've put in some really rich, almost tube, val tube consistency, dark value sepia across the foreground, knocked it back a little bit with a tissue. And I'm now going to use the palette knife and create some grasses or the suggestions of grasses by scraping through the rich paint so that you can um, see the shape of these grasses suggested in the foreground. And this way, I'm hoping I can begin to balance up the composition a little bit. At the moment, it's a bit heavy on the right side, and that's why I dabbed out um, some of the heavier paint with the tissue to lighten it. And in a moment, I will add some ordinary table salt into the foreground. Um, that will cause each crystal, each salt crystal, will push the salt away and cause it to create little tiny blooms, which will give me flowers. But the plus side is it will completely lighten up that area in the foreground and balance things out a little bit more without me having to add more trees or anything on the left, which I'd rather not do. So using the palette knife just to start off some trunks and branches in the trees and then I'll just um, do a few finishing touches, add the salt and then it'll be time to let it dry. So just a few more grasses etched through the damp paint with the palette knife tip. You can of course use the corner of um, a plastic store card or the end of a paintbrush or your fingernail to create similar effects. Um, I'm now letting it dry and you probably noticed that my board has been laid flat so the washes won't run anymore. So here it is completely dry. And I like the sort of effects. I think they've done just what I wanted them to do in the foreground, suggested that sort of something and nothing tangle of sort of grasses and flowers. I'm going to brush off any surplus salt that didn't dissolve into the wet washes using a dry brush. And then I'm going to use my rigger brush and a dark value of sepia to define the tree trunks and a few of the branches a bit more and I'll add a little bit more detail here and there to the painting, um, wet on dry, to finish it off.
So that's the painting just about finished. I'm going to use my scrubber brush, which is um, a hog bristle brush that I've chopped the um, bristles down really short and dip it into clean water. And I'm just softening back a few of the harder edges in the distance. If we have hard edges in the distance, it can distract. So um, distant features should be paler and less defined than those in the midground and of course the foreground. So I'm going to remove the tape and have a look at it. Seeing it with a clean white border um, lets us see the painting in its kind of finished state so to speak and I'm really pleased with it. I think it has got that sort of um, sepia look like an old photograph um, and I think that adds charm to it even though it's only one colour the values there work really nicely. I'm hoping you can sort of see that the variety of tones on the trees, um, the canopies and the branches really is quite nice. So we get a good range from sepia, a good range of values, but the salt effects in the foreground are really pretty as well. So I've really enjoyed painting this scene and I hope you have too. Um, let me know what you think in the in the comments and if you'd like me to have a go at maybe sort of designing a painting that's designed to look old-fashioned, a bit like an old-fashioned sepia photograph, then let me know in the comments if you'd like me to have a go at something like that and I'll start thinking about it. I think it could be quite fun to do something that's sort of deliberately sort of a bit vintage or a bit retro. Thank you for watching. Uh, please leave us a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And thank you so much to our lovely patrons who follow us on Patreon and support this channel there. So thanks again. Take care and happy painting. Bye.